about uh, what you should do when you have encounters with police. And, and everyone at some point in their life is going to have that happen. And you know, there's a, uh, you know, you, it's good to know what you should do, what you ought to do, you know, and uh, to make sure that you keep yourself as safe as possible. But before I uh, get into it, I was a prosecutor for 14 years, and nobody could do that uh, without, you know, coming up with at least one good tops and donuts story. And uh, I was at work one day, I needed to find this one, one cop who was a witness of a case that I had. And I was calling around trying to find him, and I talked to the, the, the police station, they said, you need to call a local donut shop. So I called over to the local donut shop and found out there that the, our probate judge had issued a uh, order for a mental evaluation for this lady that, uh, that worked at the donut shop. And the police went there to pick her up, take her to the hospital for this thing. And she was the only employee on duty. And uh, I guess the manager had opened the place earlier. She didn't even have any keys. So they had, they had to take her away, according to the judge's order. So the police had to stay there at this open donut shop. They couldn't close and lock the door. And they had to watch the donut shop and the money and, and the donuts. And so kind of a fox and hen house sort of thing. That's my cops and donuts thing. You know, any time that you talk to the police, you've got a couple ways that you can talk to them. You could either be doing it voluntarily, or what you call a consensual uh, discussion, or a non-consensual one. A consensual one, you would have, uh, you might call the police. That would be consensual if, if uh, someone was attacking you and your house got burglarized, and maybe you would call the cops. You might have to for your insurance company or whatever. Uh, or maybe some crazy relative would lock themselves in the bathroom and you call the police for help. And that could go badly, and I'm really not going to talk about that today. You want to think real carefully before you call the police for anything. Um, I haven't gotten in a whole lot to sell one one, but that, that seems like uh, something I'd like to learn more about in the future. So you can check that on your, your smartphone. Um, but then the other way that you can have consensual encounters that people don't think about that much is where uh, a cop has the same right to walk up and talk to somebody as anyone else does. So if um, if they just walk up to you on the street and say, can I, can I talk to you a minute? They can. It's perfectly legal. And uh, Or maybe they come to your front door and they knock on the door. They call that a knock and talk because they don't need any kind of legal cause or justification to go up and knock on the door because it's presumed that if you have a sidewalk leading up to your front door and someone can knock on it, that it's legal. So the, um, if the cop comes to the door or comes up, you, if it's a consensual encounter and they want to talk to you, you can talk to them or you can not talk to them. Uh, you can have the right to just ignore them, you can look through their head like it was made of air, or you can turn around and walk the other way, and there's nothing that they can do about it if they did not have a legal cause to stop you. But cops do that all the time. They, they know that they get to a point in a case where they, they can't really make the case, they need to get a break in it. And so they say, well, I'll just go to the door and I'll talk to so-and-so, and if they tell me, you know, what I need to know, then I'm back in business. Unfortunately, people often talk, oh, that works. They don't do things that don't work. But more often, and what I really wanted to talk about is a non-consensual uh, contact with the police, which would happen when you uh, would get stopped by the police for a, you know, a traffic violation, tail light out, or speeding, or a failure to signal. Or somebody could get stopped at maybe what, what's called a sobriety checkpoint by the road, DWI checkpoint. And when that happens, then you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to deal with the cops. And the problem that you have there is that they don't just pull you over because you have traffic, uh, you know, a tail light out or something, traffic violation. They're using that really. That's the, that's kind of like their lead, the way that uh, you know salesmen get leads, cops get leads. To make to bust good crimes, I should say, you know, crimes that are that are valuable to them by stopping people, and they may end up writing you a ticket. They may not write you a ticket. It just depends. Um, and you can, if they if they write you a ticket, I'm not. I don't even know how a person should really act when they're accused of speeding. I mean, there's situations where you can. I have had a situation where I just admitted it and said, I did it, I'm sorry, I was tired, I was on my way home. The guy wrote me a warning. I don't know. I guess, 
guess, you know, if you want to confess to any kind of crime and it isn't big enough to worry about, you know, go ahead. And who knows? Maybe it'll do you well. But that's not what the stop is about anyway. The, the cop looked at me, let me go, and, and he, he thought that, that this old man was probably not have, didn't have drugs in the car. And so I went on my way. But at the same time this is all happening, he's sizing you up, deciding whether you're a likely person to, uh, to give him some of that street cred that he won't get if you drive the ticket. And if he, uh, and he's running your license in that, and he already knows if you're some kind of a uh, troublemaker in his view. And uh, so after the ticket is written, or maybe even after the warning is written, it, the, the cop may have some questions for you if you fit his, his criminal profile. And uh, the first one that, that I, I comes to mind that, that they ask, which they all seem really stupid, really silly, like who would ever get caught up on them? The cop would say, uh, you haven't been in the car that, that I should know about. And, you know, you, just, you want to shake your head when you hear that, but some people actually, you know, will give something up. I would say that question is probably the dumbest one because that's the least likely one to produce a good result for the cop. So and they say, no, then the cop will go on. And this one actually works. They'll, they'll ask you, do you have any uh, illegal drugs in the car? And illegal drugs? Who would admit that? No one would admit such a thing. Well, lots and lots and lots of people do. Apparently, when you're sitting in the car and you have the illegal drugs or something else that would be a crime if the cop found it, you feel already busted when the cop pulls you over. And when the cop says, do you have the drugs in the car, you go, that's it, you've got me. Gee, I can't believe this is happening to me. And they go, yeah. And then the cop says, where are they? And you go, well, they're, they're in the console right here. And, and it's game over. Completely done. You're going to be taken out, handcuffed, arrested, and taken out of the station. You'll get, be interrogated later. And we'll get to that. But you know, if, if you're a savvy guy, though, you're not going to say this to you. You're going you're gonna to go, well, no, I, I don't have any drugs in the car. I, you know, I'm staying a citizen. And then the cop says, well, uh, you might as well search your car. And at this point, this is where the, the people that would never be dumb enough to say yes to the, uh, you know, to say yes that he had it. People that have never been dumb enough to actually confess, they will, uh, they'll look at the cop and they'll give permission to search the car. And uh, I, I used to, when I was a prosecutor, I would read these reports all the time. And, and I'd have it, I'd just pick in my head, it was a complete mystery to me why they would do that. I mean, they know they have the drugs in the car. Uh, and the cop asked them what that means. He doesn't even know if he's asking to, I mean, you know, to search. And yet they say yes. And, I, and when I became a defense attorney, I said, uh, I started asking my clients when they come up. And I asked them up several times. I said, well, why did you let them search the car? You knew it was there, right? Yeah, yeah, I knew. Well, then why did you let them search? And they said, well, you know, I just thought, I just thought, you know, the guy was, he was being pretty nice to me. And I thought if I just, I was really cool and, and I said, sure, man, it's okay. He wouldn't search the car. But he searched the car. The cop who wouldn't search after getting permission and asking permission, the cop who wouldn't search has not been born yet. And uh, that was a big mistake. So anyway, the, those questions, they, they know to ask these questions. And the reason they ask them is because they work so much, even though they don't seem like they would. And uh, if they find something in the car that is illegal, they're going to arrest you. You're going to have a handcuff put on you. You're going to be put in the back seat of the patrol car. You're going to be taken down to the station. And when you are, the next thing that's going to come, and this is, it's a really ugly situation, very uncomfortable. You're going to be alone, stuck into a little interrogation room. And the best, you know, I, I, I can't, I don't give legal advice. I'm a, an attorney in Missouri. And, and uh, here we are in Michigan. But um, the general rule is that one would never, ever consent to a search of any kind. I, I, okay, one exception. I'm at the airport. The TSA wants to search my bag. If I'm not going to, con going to consent you know, to that search, then I'm not going anywhere on an airplane. I know that. But in a situation where it's cop asking you if they can search anything, your car, your pocket, your purse, your house, it doesn't matter. Um, never agree to a search. Cops have to, uh, you know, they want as many good reasons why they're allowed to search as they can. Consent is one of them. 
You don't even know if that cop already has the legal right to search your car when he's asking you. He doesn't care. He's going to ask anyway. He, if he has one legal justification for getting into your business, you'd like to have two, just in case that motion to suppress comes and somebody questions the first reason he thought he had it. So he's always going to ask, and you, you never want to consent. If the cop already has a legal basis for searching the car and you say no, they will go ahead and search anyway. They don't need your permission. And, uh, and of course, you never want to physically resist a search, but you certainly do never want to agree to a search, whether it's your house, your car, it doesn't matter, except perhaps at the airport, uh, you know, for your bags. And so that's the situation you have. And obviously, if you got arrested, thrown in the back of the patrol car, things went badly. Either you screwed up or the, the dope was laying on the seat, and, and it didn't matter whether you consented or not, the cop's going to grab it and arrest you. And they take you out of the station. They're going to take you and put you in a little, uh, a little interrogation room. And the thing to remember on that is you are absolutely, completely alone. I mean, there might be a cop. There might be two cops. But you, as yourself, are alone. You have no one to talk to. You can get no advice. Uh, and they're going to interrogate you. And that could go on for hours and hours. And uh, you need to do something. You need to have a strategy to avoid that. Now, before they're allowed to ask you any questions, when you're in custody, they have to read you what's called your Miranda rights. Everybody knows this. And I realize I'm not telling anybody anything that they haven't heard before. This is just stuff you need to be reminded of. I'd say at least once a year. But most cops will keep this little card uh, with the Miranda warning on it. A lot of them just keep it in their pocket right there. And then they'll pull it out. I don't think they, they keep it there for that reason. I think they put it in the pocket and have it right there so that when they come to court, they can pull it out and say, yeah, I keep it right there in my pocket. I pull it out. And this is exactly what I say. And there's five warnings on this, the Miranda warnings. This is from the 1966 Supreme Court case of Miranda versus Arizona that said, you cannot question a person who is in custody unless you first read them these five rights. Number one, you have the right to remain silent. <clears throat> Well, that's good. You know, considering the way this jerk has been treating you so far, kidnapping you and hauling you in, putting you in this little room and not letting you talk to anybody, this is the nicest thing this cop has done for him. Maybe the nicest thing he's going to do all day, except number two, which is even better. Number two, he, he warns you, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Oh, wow. I mean, this is, that's golden because, I mean, that's so blunt. I mean, if the cop could do anything, not to say that, he would, but he has to say it. And maybe it's because he's a really nice guy, maybe it's because the Supreme Court said he had to. But notice it says, anything you say, that means if you tell, if you tell the truth, if you tell the truth, they can use that against you in court. And that could be maybe if you actually confessed and that was the truth, they would of course use that against you in court. But they would use it against you in court if you told the truth and you were innocent. Perhaps they're looking for a killer, and you're the chief suspect, and the only thing they need to prove left in the whole world to charge you with this crime is uh, to prove that you were in town that night, and you happen to be innocent, but you were in town, and they say, were you in town that night? And you go, yeah, and they say, put the cuffs on you, it's over. Okay, so you can be innocent, truthful, and talking to the police turns out to be the biggest mistake you could make. And then, of course, if you tell a lie, that's another kind thing you could say. When they find out that it was a lie, they would use that against you. So literally, when they say anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law, they really, really mean it. Anything you say and will be. The interesting thing is that if you actually said something good for your case, something that suggested that you were innocent, that absolutely cannot be introduced in a court of law. Anything you say that would be in your favor cannot be introduced. Those cops cannot be made to repeat the good stuff that you said. And so, uh, Number two is just absolutely right. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Number three, this, this is also good, but it gets confusing now. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you are being questioned. 